All right, let's uh, pick up then on our earlier conversation. Of course, uh, just a short while ago, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa was addressing the UN General Assembly. We now bring in uh, Africa and International Relations uh, Analyst, Dr. Charles Singala, to speak to us about the developments at uh, the United Nations uh, General Assembly. A very good afternoon to, uh, to you, Dr. Singala. Always a pleasure to see you, sir. Good afternoon and good afternoon to your viewers. Thank you for having me. Well, let's talk about, firstly, the importance of uh, uh, this particular gathering. One obviously hopes that, you know, it's not just a, a talk shop. I mean, the president, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, spoke about uh, the UN um, discussing reparations uh, for slavery. How do you think, you know, th th this will be addressed, uh, if at all? Uh, yes, so first of all, we must understand that uh, the UNGA is actually the policy maker body of the six organs of the United Nations. So whatever which is discussed on the speeches uh, from this General Assembly are now related or translated into policy. Uh, just only those uh, processes that uh, makes things difficult, that uh, are they going to be translated uh, in policy and law and at the end of the day, implemented. Uh, we have seen that the United Nations has been celebrated uh, the 75th anniversary and uh, many aspects of uh, governance and democracy has been discussed. Over 7,000 speeches has been addressed in that assembly, uh, ranging from poverty, uh, security and peace, you know, and as well as you now the mushrooming of the pandemic, which has taken over uh, most of the uh, discussions, which has been discussed, uh, as well as... Uh, uh, the reparation, the call for uh, reparations to be uh, accelerated by President Syria of South Africa has brought in another discussion that has to be looked at. Yeah, I want to talk about, you know, the, the, the common goal that uh, countries are likely to action uh, going forward. And it does seem that there is some sort of separation between Africa and, you know, the, the, the rest of the world. I mean, the, the president spoke about multilateral uh, solidarity between member states. And it's, you know, it's been important in terms of distribution, uh, distributing vaccines, uh, for example. But, you know, we wonder as, uh, if it will continue when it comes to, to, to other situations going forward. Yes, indeed, uh, President Ramaphosa has been consistently, you know, requesting that the developed world, the United States of America, Europe, and the other uh, lucrative countries, you know, they must not look at the poor countries as, you know, the way they are doing. They must come to assist, and as well as, uh, um, you know, if at all means to suspend the, uh, the IPs so that vaccines can be produced. Uh, at the larger scale within the continent. You know, he has talked about it again at the General Assembly. Um, but again, what we are facing in the General Assembly is something that is different. I mean, there's some cold wars uh, within the United States of America, uh, China, Russia, uh, and as well as the other superpowers who are fighting for a yeah. stake in the economic sector of society. So most of those areas are derailing unity of the all countries, member states, 190 member states to work together. We can see uh, how the virtue speech, which was recorded by Iranian president, how he uh, was very aggressively attacking the United States of America of not the way towards one common cause. So one yeah. common agenda uh, would be a very important aspect in the fight against any poverty or uh, climate change or maybe it might be the COVID pandemic and future aspects. But if we do not work together as people in the world, uh, these all efforts will be meaningless. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I considered this a little bit of a swipe at the UN. Perhaps you didn't. Um, but, uh, you know, when the president was uh, talking about the fact that, you know, he's reiterating the call uh, for representation of the African continent in the UN systems. Uh, you know, one wonders, was that, did you read it as such? Was that, uh, you know, just a, a plain call in terms of the UN involving the African continent more, which would then, uh, you know, seek the question of whether or not has that been, has that indeed then, then been lacking? Yes, uh, indeed it has been lacking for many years. You must remember that... Uh, uh, Africa does not have a permanent seat on the Security Council. Uh, many presidents have spoken before in that assembly, mm. uh, especially the one I can think of, uh, the former president of Zimbabwe, Araji Mugabe, who said uh, we need a permanent representation and be considered as part of uh, the United Nations. Uh, uh, Africa is represented by five countries, 
you know, out of 190 countries, member states of the United Nations, and plays a very significant role in terms of policy and the governance. And, uh, you know, this, I think, goes to the deaf ear, you know, in the United Nations, that uh, Africa is excluded uh, from participating in terms of policy. So all what we say uh, ends up on the policy and the platform uh, in terms of uh, speeches, and uh, these are not implemented. And, uh, you know, they meet once in a while. Uh, you know, it's something came to my thought that uh, African leaders as well, they must create even a WhatsApp chat a group that, uh, you know, they can discuss the affairs of what is happening within the country. They are member states within the countries and as well how they are reviewed from the United Nations perspective. You know, we see that uh, uh, in this COVID pandemic has actually uh, made things worse and uh, illustrated the situation that uh, even within Africa we are divided as we are trying to be accommodated in the United Nations as permanent. You know, we see in South Africa we are level two. In Zambia there is no uh, lockdown. In uh, Botswana there's lockdown up to 8 o'clock. Mm. So we need to have this one agenda and common goal and the call for 2020, 2030 agenda to end the, uh, you know, the climate change and the poverty uh, is actually moving forward. You know, we're not catching those statistics due to disunity and uh, lacking of one common goal. All right, Dr. Sankala, thank you very much for your input. Uh, much appreciated here on SABC News.